Hello and welcome to Connect. I'm your host, Randy Shabilo. On today's show, we'll have Police Chief Troy Cooper from the Saskatoon Police Service, as well as Rob Letts from the Optimist Hill Campaign. As always, we'd like to connect with you. Tweet us at Shaw TV Saskatoon. Follow us on Facebook. Check out Shaw TV Saskatoon on YouTube to watch past episodes or email shawtv10 at shaw.ca with any future guest or topic suggestions. Saskatoon's new police chief, Troy Cooper, has approached the 100-day mark and we've invited uh, Chief Cooper to come by and give us some insight into uh, his previous role and the upcoming uh, plans for the police force uh, here in Saskatoon. Chief Cooper, welcome to Saskatoon and thanks for taking time today. Thanks for allowing me to be here, Randy. Appreciate that. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, we, we've had uh, former Chief Clive Wayhill from Regina. You're from Prince Albert. That's uh, right, yeah. Uh, that you've come here to Saskatoon. Who is Troy Cooper and how did he come to be here? Well, I started policing uh, when I was 21 years old and uh, started with the Prince Albert Police Service there. So uh, I did 31 years with them and four of those years I was with the RCMP in an integrated drug unit. So I got to police uh, more than just within the boundaries of PA. I policed from Roster and North for those four years and we did uh, drug enforcement work and major crime support and that sort of thing. So I've had quite a broad experience, I guess, in policing and uh, eventually moved into management roles and supervisory roles and administrative functions and and so I spent the last six years uh, of my career in Prince Albert as the chief of police there and uh, and then I moved on on to Saskatoon here just in February. So population of Prince Albert compared to Saskatoon a little bit of a, a growing curve is, I'd imagine. How has that transition been for you? Well there's a couple transitions there. First of all Prince Albert's got a static population so the population has been the same for about 20 years or so but it services this huge region so there's about 150 175,000 people that use Prince Albert as a, as a base. Uh, Saskatoon is kind of the opposite it's got this really uh, growing population it's a larger center already so it's been a bit of an adjustment for me for sure to, to uh, adapt from a small uh, really transient community to a large growing community. What, uh, what have you noticed about uh, I'm gonna say our and now your uh, police service that you're entrusted with the reins to uh, in the commission. What what has been that growing curve for you that uh, you like so far? Well, I, I guess first of all, I was really fortunate that I was a police officer in Saskatchewan for 31 years, and so a lot of the senior staff from about the rank of staff sergeant up uh, were my friends and peers and people that I'd already worked with for a number of years on different committees. So it was a really smooth transition, and I you know I'm really grateful for that. And they were very uh, accommodating when I came into the to the building to to help me you know see how things were done and show me around and and make me feel welcome and comfortable and they've done that. Uh, so that was, uh, that was really fortunate for me, but the size of the service is an adjustment for me. Uh, but what's not an adjustment, I guess, is the root causes of crime and the things that we're dealing with as police officers day to day. That's something that's consistent right across the province. What do you see uh, just in your own role now, uh, Chief of Saskatoon Police, Police Service, uh, in terms of there was a, a review that was just uh, right. was done some time ago and just released. Is there any nuggets in there that you're kind of seeing that we can work with going forward? Yeah, the the review was extensive and it went through the entire organization and looked for efficiencies. So. Basically, in a public organization, there's not a lot of gravy, and so what they look for for efficiencies is maybe reporting structures or org structures or maybe some planning ideas uh, to give you to be more efficient. And in the review, they talked about things like the, the advantage of longer-term planning, um, so that we could look at what the model of policing should be in Saskatoon in 10 years, uh, so that we can start planning for that today. Uh, they also talked about things like um, the value of integrating with others, other partners, including the city, to make sure we're not duplicating services and that we're taking advantage of, of some of those uh, uh, partners that can help us address the actual root causes of crime, the social issues that are driving crime in Saskatoon. And that's something we, we're taking in, uh, into our planning now. And they also talked about uh, what police officers should be doing. Uh, they called it a patrol availability factor. And I just rec recognize, I guess, that police officers should be doing more than just responding to crime, uh, that they should have some time available to them uh, to be problem solvers and, and sort of be preventative. I see, I've read the review and, and it's, uh, it is very in-depth. 
Uh, I find one of the the glimpses into the professionalism scored very high on yeah. the service, and I think that's a, a testament to just the hard work that goes into the frontline officer day yeah. in and day out. Uh, Long-term planning, so 10 years, a lot can happen in two years, right. never mind 10. Yeah. Uh, we, we have a, a new building that we have the capacity to grow right. uh, into as the city grows and expands. It, and with the, the role of a police officer isn't a social worker. Correct. So how, how do you uh, see, you mentioned a, a number of community partners, what are the links that you see with policing and the different agencies or uh, people around the table in the city that you can work with? Well, I mean, there's a number of different ways that we can integrate uh, with the community and, and our partners. And one of them we see, we call it the hub model of policing, where twice a week we sit down with other social stakeholders and talk about uh, families or individuals who have sort of heightened levels of risk that maybe we can address as a community. So we do that already in some coordinated way. Uh, we also have um, uh, integrated units so we might work with our partners in the RCMP or, or other partners uh, in an integrated way so we can maybe expand ourselves outside of the limits of Saskatoon but still be able to more effectively tackle some of the causes of crime. We, we see that now with, with the traffic enforcement. Uh, so we partner with the RCMP and SGI and we do a regional sort of approach to traffic enforcement. So there's lots of little ways where we can integrate and take advantage of some of our partnerships rather than just have more police officers from Saskatoon uh, doing all of that work themselves. Would we have uh, a number of individuals working very hard within community-based organizations? Uh, right. If I use the uh, Saskatoon Crisis Intervention Service as right. an example, uh, and I've seen that firsthand on some ride-alongs where uh, there is nothing else for the officer to do and, and as a last resort you do call someone like that. Yeah. Uh, the, the PAC team uh, that you have on the service as well, can you touch on that? Is, is that a, a, a big benefit for you? Absolutely. It's another example I think of uh, working with our partners. So the, the cause of a lot of our calls, seventy between 70 and 80 percent of the calls for service have nothing to do with crime. Uh, for the police so we deal with you know things like missing children for example but also with mental health calls and so some of those calls are more appropriately responded to by mental health professionals who know the system who can you know divert people away from custody or away from offending and into the system where they need to be seen and our PAC team is a police officer working with a crisis worker who can navigate that system uh, take the calls for mental health and, and instead of you know dealing with it in a police way deal with it in a more appropriate way through health systems so those uh, teams take about a thousand calls a year so that would normally be normally require another police officer on strength to be able to address that sort of thing and they wouldn't do it as effectively uh, as having a PAC team response. And I'll let you describe what PAC stands for then. Well it's police and crisis team is what it's uh, what it's short for I guess and so basically it's just the idea that rather than a police responding in a traditional police way we respond with our community partners in this case health uh, to provide a service that's more effective uh, uh, and, and actually more efficient um, than just traditional policing. And I have seen that firsthand, so I can testify that uh, uh, it does work. Right. Yeah, I'm very proud of that uh, here in our city. Uh, the police plane has often come up as uh, some people say we don't need it. Others say it's better than a helicopter, and it does give the police uh, an extra set of uh, tools and eyes that can uh, keep some safety on right. the streets instead of high pursuits uh, and things like that. Uh, are there any further advancements happening with the uh so this patrol. year uh, we were releasing a plane and now we purchased our own plane so we have a, uh, it was more cost efficient for us to do that and so we can put that uh, cost savings into more hours in the air and we've been able to use it uh, not only in Saskatoon but to assist uh, when required with the RCMP or with other police services and mo most recently we were looking for a, a small boy that was lost uh, in the north and so it was uh, our opportunity I guess to help some of our partners but it's incredibly uh, effective when we're dealing with things like pursuits as you mentioned when we can not have to put people's lives in jeopardy, officers lives in jeopardy um, uh, involved in, with an evade police uh, action when we can have a, uh, an airplane tracking somebody from a distance safely and still at the end of the day uh, do our enforcement an initiative at the end of it, right? So sure. it's just a, it's a really great way for us to be able to, to more safely uh, do the work that we have to do. 
So coming here from Prince Albert, there must be a few events that you uh, have attended and yes. like to attend, I would think. Wow. Uh, what, what are some of the things that you're seeing here and you've been to that uh, are on your radar, that uh, radar is a good word, Yeah. Uh, that, that you like about Saskatoon that you've been to? Well, Saskatoon, first of all, it's, a, uh, it's physically a very beautiful city with the river. I drive over the river every day. And in the winter, it's always open, so it's got this sort of this this hope of spring is there all winter. So I really enjoyed that. But it's a beautifully diverse uh, community, and I've been so fortunate to meet with uh, with a number of uh, of cultural groups in the city, uh, quite a few of them. And, and fortunately for me, uh, they often involve eating and uh, great meals. And so the different communities, and, and you've seen the diversity in Saskatoon. Uh, there's a function or a celebration or an event uh, happening almost every week. And, uh, and I've attended uh, many, many of those events. So I'm really fortunate uh, to have been able to be exposed to that early on. Tell us uh, a little bit about some good experiences you've had in our city. I, I like to keep the, uh, the program about good news. I'll yeah. leave the rest for yeah. other media. But uh, has there been anything that stood out uh, in terms of a good experience or someone sure. has popped in? Or yeah, well, we've had quite a few visitors and I've been fortunate, you know, to meet people in my position and throughout my career. Uh, but I had a highlight uh, while I was here. I met, uh, you know, people like Ralph Goodale and Pamela Wallen, but uh, um, the other day, uh, Ken Dryden stopped at the office and that was, uh, the whole building had to come to a halt uh, while we went down and met Ken and, and introduced him around. And I embarrassed myself, I guess, I ran through the front office and all the people that were there for service. I mentioned that Ken Dryden was one of the, one, one of the rooms off to the side and and it was just a highlight for me. It's uh, nothing to do with policing at all, uh, but he was in the building and he was there actually to help uh, with some of the first responders around the Humboldt uh, tragedy. Oh, yes. uh, so he was there for a very serious reason, but it was, uh, and, he, and he's an incredible man, uh, but we were really fortunate to have him come in and, and help out. I think for some of the younger viewers, uh, Ken Dryden was a goalie. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> yeah. And, Montreal Canadiens yeah. and Team Canada. Uh, Chief Cooper, uh, 300,000 welcomes to you and your family uh, here to Saskatoon. I wish you the best of luck and success in your career here and uh, you have a good strong ally with a lot of the citizens here and uh, I really want to see you succeed so I best of luck. It. Thank you very much, appreciate yep. that. We'll be right back.